Welcome to Soul Thrive, where we explore spirituality through healing trauma, shadow work, and applying the laws of the universe in order to master ourselves without the fear of the unknown. Okay. All right. So Another episode. Um, episode three. Episode three. <laughs> Let's talk about alignment. You okay. talk about alignment quite a bit. I do. Um, I do. There, there is a lot of um, different ways of looking at alignment. Um, so when we, to start off with alignment, yeah, you what have, is it? Okay. So mm -hmm. basically it really is everything in your vibrational stance, like your energy, your experiences, um, your themes in your life are yours to experience. Okay. So okay. anything that's meant to be yours is already going to be yours. That's what we want okay. to understand. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't desire and manifest and want expans expansion and expansiveness. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that you can't evolve, but your alignment will always keep you in the space that you need to be so that you are staying true to yourself and your purpose and your soul's contract as well. So is alignment something that is already kind of decided for you when you come to, in? To a, to a degree. Not okay. that you cannot, because you do have you, you have free will, choice and yeah. you have choice, you can experience, however, out of alignment is usually in a vibrational stance of comparisons and led by trauma. Okay. So meaning like if I, let's say um, you, you ran your own business and I wanted to be an entrepreneur and run my own business. Okay. And so I wanted to view what you were doing. Like there's nothing wrong with me looking at like your step-by-step -step process or like what you're doing. Oh, I but, want to be an entrepreneur too. Right. 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 If entrepreneurship is something that wasn't part of your soul alignment mm -hmm. what will happen is you're going to run into more of the trauma that's showing up to help you develop a better sense of you okay so if i'm comparing myself to you and i'm like if you could do it i can do it too which anyone can do anything that they want to do at the end of the day right the reality of the situation is i may be abandoning myself and operating from your vibrational stance, which pulls me out of alignment to my true self. Mm, so that's when people think, oh, I should be an entrepreneur. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. When it's really maybe not even in their no, alignment. at all. So alignment is basically your authentic self. 100%. Um. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's hard because, like, again, like, who am I or how do I operate? And so if I do not have experiences in contrast, I won't be able to define my alignment. So at the same time, this is why when we're talking about spirituality and we're talking about uh, spiritual principles and we're looking at things, it can be very hard to translate dimensional processes, dimensional being like other frequency and alignments and experiences mm -hmm. into third dimensional context. Meaning like if I'm talking about alignment, it's mm -hmm. a little bit more than just, okay, well, as long as I'm true to myself, then everything is just going to fall into place. You could be true to yourself and still desire you could be true to yourself and still need expansion. You'll be true to yourself and that also will then create the experiences of alignment that you need because it's going to teach you, uh, are you out of it or mm -hmm. are, you, are you in it? Meaning, like maybe your desire was to make a lot of money, right? right? And so then you went on the path and you did all the things and you made all the money, but while you made all the money, you lost your relationships you, you, anything that had meaning to you went away. Mm. Um, now your health is suffering. So now like there's something so in your life, right? Yeah. Right. So now yeah. you're out of the alignment. And so then something shows up like as a bridge to bring you back to alignment. Okay. So it could be like a really, um, hard situation that brings grievances up into mm -hmm. your life and mm -hmm. into your journey to say, did you really want that? Was that really what you really wanted? And like, now you've experienced it. And so now that you've experienced it, what does that feel like? And if it feels good to continue on that path, then do it. But if you know you're coming from a place of resistance, where again, you're, you're kind of like, no, I'm holding on to this. Again, we can kind of look at like what we refer to as like even the limited mindset, right? Mm -hmm. No, this is mine and you're not going to take that from me. 
then we're just operating out of alignment. Right. But if we're in alignment, there is no fear of losing anything. Because what's meant to be yours is yours anyways. Do you get it? That's why it's like harder to conceptualize from a third dimensional perspective because most people are like, well, if I align, then I align with my purpose and purpose and it gives me intention. Intention makes me have these experiences and it becomes this roadmap. Mm -hmm. But that's not how alignment works. Alignment is more intrinsic than that. It's going to pull you in that way. And it's going to pull you in this way. And you're going to, your intuition is going to kick in in a different light, in a different perspective. And so you may have experiences in your life and you may think to yourself, why am I on this journey? And like, I don't understand why I'm learning all these things. But then 10 years down the road, you're like, I get it now. The reason right. why I had to go through all that is because like now this makes sense for me to be in this. Mm -hmm. Right? And like, I look at myself too. I can give myself as an example. I never wanted to be a spiritual teacher or do any readings or work with any of my gifts. I didn't want to right. do any of that. What did you want to be? <laughs> so I, I wanted to go into school for interior decorating and design, which mm -hmm. I did. And I did do some courses and stuff like that. Um, but I found it very difficult because I was constantly being pulled. There was always something pulling me away from the things that I thought I should be doing. Okay. And I was getting angry and I was getting frustrated and I was getting burnt out. And I was getting exhausted because I was like, I really just want to make myself feel successful in these areas. Even to the degree where I like, I thought maybe I should just go to be a nurse. Like I'll go to school. I'll do all these other things. And every time I would take a step forward, it just wouldn't work out. Oh, okay. Okay. And so I would then get like a job that. or okay. that experience or whatever. And then after like, a couple of years or a few years working in that experience, something bad would happen and then it would like force me to go into a different, every single experience that I had pushed me back into this. Meaning I was always helping someone. I was always coaching someone through something. Mm -hmm. I was always giving someone a message. I was always mm -hmm. healing someone's issues. I was always feeling people's feelings, thoughts and experiences. Right. Eventually one day I went, I can't, I can't fight this anymore. Just give up. I'm going to do it. I surrendered right. to it. And yeah. alignment is also about this massive surrendering, right. this opportunity to just kind of be like, okay, you know what? I got to trust that there's something in here that knows where to take me as well. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I'm not going to have my experiences. It doesn't mean I'm going to not have relationship dynamics and contrast and whatever else shows up. Yes, you're supposed to. Right, that's, but, that was my, so my question was going to be, alignment doesn't always feel good. No. Is what you're saying. No, and it shouldn't. So what does it feel like? When you're actually in your alignment, it feels like a sense of relief. Which doesn't mean you don't have contrast. No. Right. It also means that you trust yourself enough to know that no matter what happens, you're not attached to anything. You're not attached to the outcome. Mm -hmm. Right? And you're not attached to the experience of it. You're not attached to the feeling of it. You just, mm -hmm. it's a knowing, it's an understanding. You have a personal understanding to your soul. Right. To know that you are where you need to be right now. Yeah. And like, it's okay. Like there's a part of us that just has to accept. Like if I'm in my alignment right now, right? Where I'm exactly where I need to be doing exactly what I need to be doing right now. And that's going to take me on to the next phase of whatever mm -hmm. I need to learn or experience based on my own intentions, based on my own thoughts, based on my own um, expansiveness, whatever that may look like. But alignment is not so black and white in thinking. Most people think as long as I just keep my energy good and attune to my energy and stay positive and affirm things and create what I need, that's a little bit of the tunnel vision. That's you taking control more than you allowing and you're not actually you're, you're operating from a place of fight or flight you're operating from a place of trauma you're allowing your trauma to lead in that moment because you need to be successful you need right. to have a purpose so what's the what's the link between intuition and alignment then so intuition is a very, like alignment and intuition they both kind of work hand to hand because they're very like soft and like kind and you just it's like just trusting the thought that you have in the moment, like go to the store today to go grab this. And you're like, okay, you go to the store and you grab that and run into a person who gives you a job opportunity, mm -hmm. right? Like instead of me worrying so much because the worry also blocks our alignment in a lot of ways and like the anxiety of it and like the fear of the unknown 
also takes away from that joy that we can experience when we're in alignment. Inner child work, what I love about inner child work the most is that it is really creating the opportunity for you to stay in alignment. How, how so? So the more that you do inner child work and shadow work, the better you get to know yourself, the more you let go of the trauma and the experiences that define mm -hmm. you or have created the false narrative of who, of who you are. So the more your soul shines, the more the opportunity for joy to come in, the more for relief to happen. And when we're more relaxed, we're more in alignment. Right. So if alignment doesn't always feel good, can you, can you give me an example of like a time so, when you so were, if you, if so, even if I'm in alignment to something and it doesn't feel good, I may actually not be in an alignment to the thing that I need right now in this moment. So meaning like I may be forcing something that's in my alignment. That's not the right time. Just not right now. It's right. just not the right time. Right. Because alignment plays a big role with timing. Alignment has everything to do with universal principles. And it has everything to do with dimensional processes. It's not so third dimensional. That's what people don't understand. The way we are operating with how we look at alignment is actually like counterintuitive. It's like everyone's like, well, as long as you're true to yourself. Okay, but there are many layers to myself. Mm -hmm. So I have to know what truth feels like to me. Okay. In order for me to know what truth feels like to me, I have to trust myself. Mm -hmm. In order to trust myself, I cannot add doubt. I can't. I have to be able to listen to my gut, listen to my intuition. Not only that, but I also have to be very aware of how I operate in my reality. And I have to also know my traumas very well and my experiences very well so that I'm not constantly pulled into, let's say, people-pleasing tendencies, violating my boundary, um, overworking myself, pushing against myself. Um, I think also people assume discipline is alignment. Mm. It's not. Discipline is a practice all on its own. Right. Uh, discipline is imperative for individuals to get into a process of awakening and healing and discernment and executing a form of embodiment. So like all my principles that are happening, I now have the discipline to operate this way. I embody it. Mm -hmm. I'm not just saying it and then not doing it. My, my, my words are, are lining up with my actions and a little bit more integrity in that. But with alignment, it's not discipline because at the end of the day, it's more of your soul's energy that's trying to translate an experience in your third, dimen third dimensional process. And so discipline becomes this thing where like, if you work really hard and if you have positive mindset and if you, you know, you're mentally strong and like, you know, you've got all these principles that can pull you very out of alignment. Because we're not allowing the soul you know, to speak to yourself, right? at, at right. all. You're actually, you're, you're putting these objectives onto you. So then so most people will say, then how do you define success in that? Well, you first have to understand that, like what your personal definition of success is going to be different than everybody else's. Okay. Right. So if your success is like, I just want to make lots of money and I just want to have like, you know, a successful business. Okay, fine. That could be your alignment. I don't know. Maybe it is. But I'll tell you this right now, if other areas of your life are suffering, then it's not. So is that one of the sure ways you know that you're out of alignment? Like, I, well, I guess say, if you get sick or yeah, I think or I think like an accident. Yeah, or, I think too sometimes like you could be out of alignment in an experience with something for a very very long time, and then the right moment comes with the right experience, and you've accepted the contrast mm -hmm. and then you register the reason why you were out of alignment for such a long time and the reason for that is you needed to learn something in order for you to ex expand forward so that your soul goes okay she's not hearing me she's not listening to me she's not defining me she's not doing the work in this way mm -hmm. so now she's going to stay in this relationship with someone for x amount of years mm -hmm. I'm just going to have a lot of contrast. I'm just going to have a lot of experiences. But the more and more she does, 
the more and more wise or the more and more of a sense of self she's going to develop or the more and more she's going to have uh, more boundaries, more conviction, more no more lack of self-doubt. It could go the opposite spectrum too. It could get worse, meaning like you could go feeling like your anxieties are up. You could go even further out of alignment. Mm -hmm. Contrast shows up because it wants to teach us more about ourselves and you could go even in the depression of everything. But even that eventually there, there will have to be a moment of awakening of some sort. So the universe mm -hmm. is always working in our favor. That's what alignment is all about. To get us into alignment. Right. right. It's always right. working in our favor. It's always energetically trying to help us stay on track to a degree. Mm -hmm. But we also have to experience our contrasts in order for us to also appreciate what alignment has to offer us. Because, I mean, right. at the end of the day, if my soul wanted to experience a buffet of experiences, that's alignment. I'm going to have a buffet of experiences. But let's say you're someone who has a really hard time due to your trauma in your childhood and you have like commitment issues. Okay. Right? But your alignment is all about commitment. Okay. So your soul energy is like, I, you came here for commitment. You came here to experience commitment because your soul's going to know what it needs to experience because you came in here with that contract. Right. Right? And that's what you're here for. The contrast and the original wound in your childhood is creating the understanding around commitment. So if you have lack experiences, yes. that also like helps you define what the opposite of that is. You have to. That's what we're here for. Right. We're here to like, if I say I'm here for a buffet of experiences and this is what my alignment looks like. I have to experience the contrast of that for me to understand how that's going to make me feel and how I'm going to appreciate that and value that. And that's going to push me even further into my alignment. Mm -hmm. How does one figure out what their alignment is? Okay. So this one's a little bit like more, <laughs> and this is why I said like, it's when we're talking about alignment, it's a very, it's more than just what third dimensional thinking mm -hmm. is all about. Okay. I have to reiterate that because I've had countless conversations with people around like alignment or out of alignment or in alignment or whatever. And all of it is true. You could be in alignment to something and also out of alignment to something based on where you are in your vibrational stance. So it's more of a knowing of your frequency. It's more of knowing of like what your journey and what your purpose is and understanding like like I've got these gifts or I've got this, like for instance, let's say a child, you can look, you look at this from a child's perspective. Cause like you will know a child's alignment instantly. How come? Okay. Like how? Okay. So, so if you see children that are like really artistic, okay. Right. Like they like love art and they could spend hours doing art, like just drawing, painting. And that's not to say old children don't like doing art. And that's like a big part of their like developmental phases. And, and so absolutely. But let's say a child really, really, really just like has a connection to art. That's okay. part of their alignment. And now I'm saying, and this is why I, I think like in our educational system too, like we have to get better at like noticing the children's actual talents yes. and like yeah, yeah, uniqueness yeah, yeah. and all that. Because then it's not to say that you shouldn't learn math. It's not to say that you shouldn't learn English and like all mm -hmm. of that. All of those things are important. But if I come from a family of scientists... Right. And everybody in my family is a scientist. Mm -hmm. And I've now come into the contrast. I'm going to be the art one. I'm going to be the artist. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no. Like we, this is how we structure our family and our experiences. That contrast mm -hmm. is going to pull me out of alignment. And then maybe what will, what will happen down the road is like I went to school. I studied, I went to university. I studied science, biology, chemistry, whatever it was, right? Because that was kind of what was and I valued. And I hate it. Right. right? Right? Like, because at the end of the day, my family structure was like, this is how you belong. Mm -hmm. If you belong in our family, this is how, this is how we operate. Right. So now all of a sudden I'm being pulled into this direction, which is pulling me out of alignment. And then I don't know why I'm depressed. I don't know why my relationships are failing. I don't know why I fucking hate what I'm doing. I have a, like right. a midlife crisis. I go, oh my God, like. I, I want to quit school and I want to go travel. I want to go do something else or I want to go take an art Is class. Is that like the awakening to like yeah, there figuring a, out my For alignment. sure. Yeah. For sure. Like there, quitting jobs. Out yes. Of the yes. Like mm. it. Okay. Right. Sense. Does that make sense? Right. And like the soul energy is kind of like 
telling you. It's always kind of giving you little subtle hits, a little subtle movements, a little, like, I don't know how to not do this. Right. I have been doing it since I was a kid. I can't imagine you doing any other <laughs> job. <laughs> imagine customer service. Oh, no, I, be, I mean, I did it. I did it. And I was like, Blah. don't have time or energy for this. But no, it's the truth. Like at yeah. the end of the day, like anything else I did was because I, I had the narrative in my, in my childhood from my mother right. telling me, get a job, work at the job, work ahead, do this, save your money. It was the constant conversation with my mother was save your money, save your money. Right. Yeah. And I was always like, Oh, I gotta save my money. And then I wouldn't. And somehow I would be like, I have no money. Where the hell did my money go? Right. Yeah. Cause I was so out of my alignment. Right. And then when I started kind of going, well, let me lean into this because like at the time when I started spirituality, it was, it was starting to be a bit of a trend. Right. Mm -hmm. Starting just a mm -hmm. bit. It wasn't like a lot. I mean, psychic mediums and mediums and channels and all of those types of people existed already. Yeah. There was a different demographic for it. Yeah. I didn't fit into that norm either mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I was like, I don't like that. That's not how I operate. But now I feel like I'm being disrespectful to their craft right. by being different. I don't fit into this paradox. I don't fit into that paradox. I don't know what to do. And so I went, well, fuck it. I'm going to just figure it out. Mm -hmm. And in that came me being the type of spiritual teacher that I am now. And I'm not for everybody. I'm an acquired taste 110% because I don't hold hands and I don't sugarcoat things and I say things how they are. And people don't like that because they want someone to validate their experiences, mm -hmm. right? Or hold their hand or whatever. But at the end of the day, what it comes down to is like, I the one thing, even when I pulled away from trying to do this, I was always thrown back into this. I was like, even if I, even if I try to do something else, somehow yeah. I'm sitting across from someone giving a message about their deceased loved one right. or having a conversation about some spiritual concept or, you know, and I was like, I cannot deny that, that, yeah. that yeah. this is my alignment. And then there are other people that think that they're very spiritual or that they're very intuitive or that they have these gifts and I can tell energetically they're very out of alignment. Right. So what are some of the questions that like, I guess one of them is what do I always keep going back to? Like, or like what, where do I keep getting pulled into? Or like, what do I, yeah, I would ask that. like my interests, like what yeah, do I, I would, like I would, doing? Yeah. Yeah. Your interest and not every interest is going to make you money. Right. And not every right. hobby is going to make you money. Yeah. I loved interior decorating and design. I love doing it. I've done it for a lot of my clients. Even now I still do it. But for me, it's just like, it's like a break. It's mm -hmm. like a nice little hobby that I put myself into and I'm like, oh yeah, I'll do that mm -hmm. for a while. And then, I mean, it's still in your alignment to some degree. Yeah. And like, it's just not the there, main thing. And it's right. not just like what people don't understand too with alignment. There are many things that you're good at, but you know, you have to ask yourself like how far out of alignment and how depressed are you and how like your emotions are going to give you an indicator of when you're out of alignment. Right, right, right. It's about like how you feel. And then when you do get in alignment, then opportunities will Always. just keep coming. Always. Oh my God. I remember yes. you said to me, uh -huh. like, you are never going to leave marketing or advertising mm -hmm. to a degree. Like, it's always going to be, every time I'm like, I want to get out of this godforsaken yeah. industry. And you're like, nope, it's always going to be there. Yeah. It, it, and it will, because it is part of who you are. It's part of your alignment. There's a purpose mm -hmm. for it. There's a reason for it. And it, it saddens me because not a lot of people are going to find their purpose. And it saddens me a lot. Not a lot of people are in their alignment because there, there are a lot of people that are still operating with the limited mindsets. Mm, yeah. Still assuming that they're living abundant lives and then registering that, you know, and you'll see this, you'll see this. If you've got children, you'll see how it's psychologically affecting your children now, how out of alignment you are and how it's affecting them. And, and then this kind of generational pattern keeps occurring. Um, I grew up in an environment where there was a little bit of like, there was a lot that when oh, I'll have a whole conversation about my childhood one day, but like there was a freedom to explore. Mm -hmm. Like even I remember my, my sister went to university and she went to school for speech pathology as to become a speech pathologist. And, and she was struggling in school and she was having a really hard time, not because she couldn't do it, but because she was stressed out. Like, you know, she right. was working, she was doing, there was a big course load. There was a lot. And my mom looked at her and said, quit. 
That's like, amazing. it was just like, yeah, no. Go one, Jenny. Right, right. It was one of those, she's like, why are you, why are you, my mom said to her, why are you going to make yourself sick mm. over something that, and my sister, my sister was like, she's right. Not that my sister quit. My sister didn't quit. She still went ahead and still did that due to her own limited mindsets or experiences. However, just hearing my mom say, like, we don't expect this from you. Like, your health matters more than anything else in the world. Yeah. And I think with alignment, we have to, have to become very aware that our health and our vitality plays a significant role with our alignment. Right. And that goes back to even being aligned to certain people, yes. certain romantic relationships yes. or friendships. Like how yes. do you feel? Yes. Are you drained? Yes. I mean, we'll do a conversation yeah. on all that too, on relationships and alignment and all that. But right now, like that fundamental, like your health and your vitality will give you an indicator if you're if in you're alignment or, or out of alignment. And I'll tell you that right now. And the last year, I mean... Again, I haven't had the conversation with you guys about the quantum shifting. I mean, we did, but, and very few did. The quantum shifting too, what's interesting is like, you will have a lot come up. So mm -hmm. like things like that have been stagnant in the body or staying stagnant in your nervous system for a very long time or illnesses or, or, or things that have been kind of dormant in the body may come up. Because they want you to come very aware, become very aware around how of alignment, out of alignment you've been and what you need to do to better that experience. Right. Because I, I think about like people who don't do the healing work and how they manifest like really bad sicknesses and illnesses and diseases. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is, is because the body is trying to make you aware of how out of alignment yeah. you've been for such a long time or how resistant you have been to your alignment into your experiences. And you know, the, the, the pain and the sore that you're anchoring into your body and you're not actually doing anything with it. There's no, there's no evolution to that. And so sickness shows up because it's giving you an indicator Hey, there's something that's out of alignment here. And I know this for myself. And, and I love this too with the quantum shifting or like the manifesting or if you're on a manifesting process or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do not expect it to be beautiful. Like it's, if it's giving more of like stuff in your face and like more crap in your face and like things are being thrown in your face, then yep. That's showing that you've been out of alignment for so long and look at how out of alignment you've been and look at all the things that you've created that you've just kind of brushed aside and you've created chaos and all these experiences and you've got to heal, you've got to deal, you've got to assess, you've got to process and then boop, all of a sudden you're back into alignment. What's the quickest way to get back? You do mm. <laughs> Okay. Or what's, what's a, there how do you start no that process? Okay, well, you have to surrender. There has to be there has to be a relationship between you and the universe, and you have to surrender. There has to be a point, like of reference for you too to understand. Like sometimes it's like you know when people say like I had that moment where I couldn't take anymore, and I just went fuck it, right. just like it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alignment. Right. And then they wonder why. Oh my God! The moment I let go, and the moment that I just surrender to the experience, everything just started to show up right right and it's like yeah it does and like what's meant to be yours will always be yours you, no one can take that from you i can't take this from you and you can't take this from me and you will even if you wanted to like be a spiritual teacher down the road let's say hypothetically speaking right and deal with the responsibility of that the face. right <laughs> but the reality is even if you did you could do it from your point of view and that could be a potential alignment from your point of view but I also guarantee you, can you feel the resistance in your body? Oh, 100%. Right? As soon as you said that, because the other, just to go back to Korea, yeah. like people have said to me, oh my God, you'd be such a good therapist because I already sued people. Or like, mm -hmm. I've learned to sue people, to understand people, to fix people. Yeah, but that's but your trauma. Like, but that's your trauma. Right. I'm like, that doesn't feel like my alignment. Like, would I be good at it? Probably. Could I make money? Probably. But I feel like I'm probably happier working in advertising. Yeah, yeah. No, but the truth of the matter is there's a difference between being in alignment and a trauma leading. So like your trauma by like, by, by asserting yourself or fixing things 
comes from your relationship dynamic with your mom and your enmeshment trauma. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so if someone says to you, wow, you'd make a really good therapist, you probably could. My own, my old therapist told me yeah. that I would make. Right. No, it's true. Right, you could right, very right, well right. make a very good therapist, but at but, the expense of what? Am I just perpetuating my trauma? Yes. Every single time I sit, sit across a client. Right. Yeah. If I was to do that. Yeah. And, and then add your victim mentality on top of that. And then oh, add and your I would want to make, see changes yes, in them and yeah. then I would take it personally. So, and the rejection wound on top of that. Come on. Oh like, man, that would right, be horrible. Right. No, you would feel you would lose yourself in that. You would literally be like, but then what, what fucks people up is that the external validation is, but you, you're so good at it. And then you're like, but I'm so good at it. And so since I'm so good at it, then I should continue doing Just it. Just keep doing it. Yeah. Just keep doing it because I'm getting this validation. And um, that may be, and I've had conversations and I've offended people big time that didn't want to hear it when I said, that's not in your alignment. That is not in your alignment. I don't know why you're doing that. And they're like, what do you mean? Like, I, I know this is what I need to be doing for me. And then I see them struggling in other areas or struggle, struggling in what they're doing. And, I'm, and mm -hmm. then I'm like, okay, well, if you feel that that's your alignment, that's okay. I'm not here to take that from you. Mm -hmm. But as an intuitive, as a, as a psychic media, as someone who channels information and who's tapped into so much stuff, I'm like, I can read your energy and I can see, you know what? There is something, and there is an energetic leak. Mm -hmm. We're talking about auras, right? Right. So I can see that there could be like an energetic leak going on and like your attention is going towards that. And then all of a sudden there's this conversation around, but this is my alignment. No, you're just getting attention right now and you're getting validation. And you think that because you're offering this part of you that you're not, you're going to be accepted. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you go, well, that's my alignment. And it's like, no, I'm going to be honest. Like when we look at artists, and you see like really a beautiful artists, painters and all that. They're operating from a place of their pain and their expression of their true self. They don't look at it as like, you're going to accept their art. Right. They're going, this is just an expression. And of that's how soul. you know they're in alignment. Yeah. Right. But is, isn't, is there a link between your trauma and alignment? And like the things that you, yes, I don't know how to no, I know ask this saying. question because I, say, I'm gonna, I'm to, gonna, yeah, to go back to a practical example, if yeah. you say to me, you're always going to be doing some kind of marketing, that's still business, that's still business problem solving Yeah. because I know how to solve problems because I know how to fix shit Yeah. because I learned that in my childhood to survive. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. that's a link. That's a skill set that I've learned yes. as a result of my traumatic experiences yeah. that I can now But that apply. was your alignment. But that was your alignment. The difference between... So what's the difference between solving business problems and solving other people's problems as a Because therapist? solving other people's problems that falls into your victim mentality. So if we're in a business, okay. we could stay very neutral. Business is business. So if I fix something here, you're... There's no other conversation other than I gave you the problem. I fixed the, if there was an issue with the computer, I fixed the issue with the computer. Oh, what if I gave you a business plan and a strategy and it failed? Would I not take that? Part? Would, wouldn't victim mentality also take that? Yeah, a hundred percent it would. But the reality of the situation is there's a difference between a skill set that's being developed that's in your alignment due to contrast and then a skill set that's being used and abused for external validation. Okay. And so even though, yes, you're absolutely right. That's why I said this isn't it's a, not a third it's not, black it's and white. You, yeah. you cannot look at this from a black and white perspective mm. because alignment is an energy and energy is something that you can't quantify. You cannot sit back and say it has a beginning and an end. It's a web of experiences. And so alignment is just, it's what your themes and your experiences are and what's true to your true self. Right? So for instance, now you're working through the victim mentality. Great. You knew I would, I don't want to work with people on that level, right? But I can come up with a strategic business plan and get paid for that. Didn't work out. Okay, fine. You rejected me. I now have the awareness that this wasn't about me. I did the best that I could, but I still got compensated for that. Right. Whereas like there's a massive responsibility for dealing with people's emotions. 
Yeah, that feels heavy when I think about that's that. That's more of your trauma. Right. right. That's more of like, that's so enmeshed with the trauma that you went through in your childhood. Mm. The responsibility of someone else's emotions. Yeah, that's different than the responsibility for business. Because there's also so many other factors that play. So it's not like... It's not just one yeah. thing. Yeah. Right? And so like, it's very hard for people to understand like what alignment really looks like and feels like. Here's a very simplistic way. If I was to simplify it for people, mm -hmm. stay in meditation and your high, call on your higher self and allow that energy to move with you okay just stay with that that's just okay. like the the, the the like spirituality one one okay but what will end up happening is even if you're in the meditation and you're you're connecting with your higher self you also have to get up and do work. You also have to get up and be part of your experiences and your contrast and the choices that you're making. Because you're making choices all day and every day. Mm -hmm. And some choices are pulling you in your alignment and with your higher self. And some are pushing you out of alignment into contrast so that you learn about yourself. Right. Both are good. Right. Both are needed. Okay. So it's not so black and white. It's not so like I'm in my alignment or I'm out of my alignment. But I can feel when I'm out of my alignment. And then I do certain things to get back into alignment. Right. And then opportunities and things start to show up. Oh, now I'm out of alignment. I'm having my experience. I'm having my contrast. Oh, back into alignment. So, so it's like I said to you, it's very, it cannot be so black and white thinking. And with mm -hmm. metaphysics or spirituality or your spiritual practices, people have to stop thinking from black and white or like this is the way it is and this is what the way it is. It isn't because what I'm going to tell you from a third dimensional perspective or from a fourth dimensional perspective is going to be very different from a seventh dimensional perspective. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm talking from a seventh dimensional perspective, no such thing as an alignment. I'm, I'm flowing with the universe and it's always happening the way that I want it to. Right. I don't have to worry about anything. Imagine right. the freedom in that. Right? From a fourth dimensional perspective, it's okay. There's, I'm learning contrast. I'm moving here. I'm having this. Do you see what I'm trying to get at? It's not, it, I cannot say that there is a roadmap to alignment. And anyone who's selling you that is lying to you. I'm telling you that. Oh yeah, there's a lot of that out there too. It's like a, it's not a formula, is what you're saying. No, it can't be right. because it. The, okay, so if there was a formula, it would only be based on where you are from your vibrational point of perspective. Right, because at the end of the day, based on your vibration, you're in alignment to your experience regardless. Mm -hmm. So. It, it you know I mean it's not to say because like I, I really think like too I think that people need to try things and people have to have experiences like I said you're here to have a, you know, you a buffet but yeah. you have to have an, a buffet of experiences yeah. right but I'll tell you this right now if you are very connected to your universe and your spirit, spirituality and your principles it, you know if you're in alignment, you alignment. know, yeah. you know it. There is no struggle. There is no exhaustion. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this right now. Or you even know if you experience contrast, you know that you needed it to overcome something else to propel you further into alignment. Yes. Like it's even timing. like, goes even, back to even like my, just to go back to the layoff. Yeah. I was in alignment to it mm -hmm. to propel me to where I'm at right now. Yeah. Also because you asked for it. Right. So there's that too. Yeah, you see what I'm trying to get at? It's not so black and white. And that's why I'd love to give everybody a, a process. But the process in itself is like, it really comes down to like really trusting yourself. Mm -hmm. And it really comes down to knowing and not adding any doubt in your experiences. And it really comes down to like, there's a difference between I can make something happen and I can smash holes. Right. Right. I can, and anyone could do anything. But why did it happen to somebody easier than mm. somebody who had to work really hard for it? Right. Because it was in their alignment. If it happened easier, it was in their alignment. It was effortless. You could see this. We'll use an athlete, for instance, okay? Mm. Some people, children, walk into this world inclined athletically. They, they just know. You see they pick up a ball and they're just like, boop. That was their right, thing. like yeah. there you are, there's your yeah. alignment, right? Yeah. But another kid 
may want that because they think that that's going to give them the sense of validation mm. and approval. So the parents spend all the money, they do all the things, they create and they develop the skill set, and then they injure themselves or they, you know what I mean? Or like they're, they don't go anywhere with it because right. it's not their alignment, right? So it's hard to say because there's so many factors that play a significant role, but like, I really do think like the universe and anything I, I want, you know, I want everybody to take a moment and, and assess for themselves. If you've had a really hard experience occur in your life, I want to, I want you to ask yourself this question right now. What did you learn from it? Right? What mm -hmm. did you learn from it? Mm -hmm. And then what opportunity showed up right after? How did that thing change your life? And how did it move this closer towards your alignment? So that there was this more effortless type of experience going mm -hmm. on. And like people do get insights. Intuition comes in and things do happen and experiences do occur. Where like, like who was the girl that did the Harry Potter books? I oh yeah, know, I right? forget her name. Yeah, but, yeah. but she was like broke her whole life or something. Right, and, and then she going. had this inspiration at yeah. the right moment at the right time. And then she just sat down and channeled this book. Yeah. Right, it was like, oh hey, here is this experience. So how about people in the acting career field or whatever, they get their lucky break in their 40s or someone's new career starts in their 40s or 45s. Mm -hmm. Like this idea that it needs to happen now at this specific time and age, no. It, alignment is about timing. I want to know that I have a solid foundation underneath me so that whatever is going to be, that I, whatever it is that's going to come into my alignment that's meant to be mine, I don't lose it. I don't Ruin create it. more yeah, contrast. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? I have the education and the wisdom and the insight to make right. the experiences better. Right. Does that make sense? Because then maybe you're not ready when you think that you want something and you're just not ready. So you have to go through experiences to get ready. <sighs> and, and everybody does this. Like I, I'm, I'm like, I, I'm supposed to get married. I'm supposed to have kids. I'm supposed to have this. I'm supposed to have that. And then they're out of alignment and out of alignment and it's not happening and it's not happening. It's right. not to say that there's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. Mm -hmm. It's just that your soul energy came in with a different experience and, and like a different contrast. Yeah. So what if you don't have that look the way that you thought it was supposed to look? Yeah. It could be better for you. I actually did think about that just to go back to that note. Like if I was a mother in my 30s, I would have fucking lost my shit, lost myself, and that child would be traumatized. Uh, so it would it would be like better for me to have it even in my mid forties than like in my thirties. Yeah, I think I think everyone's journey is different. And I think like I mean when you're younger too, what do you know? Like in yeah, your twenties yeah. when you're having but kids. But even but with I'm with the, with my awareness of my trauma. Yeah. And if my trauma is I'm gonna lose myself no wonder it was never also in my alignment because I also wasn't pro. I know there's more. I wasn't processing the trauma. Yeah. I wasn't all of that. But like, how could it be in my alignment? Because I, I wasn't ready for it. No. I wasn't even trying to be ready for it. Yeah. And then, you know, like surprises happen, right? Like some people were like, well, I didn't expect this to happen now. And it's right. like, because that was your alignment. Like that was supposed to happen. It was meant to come into your life, into your experience in this moment at this time. And you wanted your career to succeed, but now you got pregnant accidentally. And now here you are raising a child. That doesn't mean that you can't have a career down the road. Who's, mm -hmm. again, that goes back to the limited mindset of us, the assuming that you only have a small amount of time to achieve whatever right. your soul's energy wants you to achieve or not right. achieve or what you think you should be achieving. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, I love having the conversation about it, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a little bit more than just, um, black and white thinking yeah. or like that I'm doing this because I hear this a lot. Oh my God. I've heard this so many times. This brings me joy. And I'm like, I'm happy that that brings you joy. I, I think that that's amazing that you're having the experience of what brings you joy. And like, this is what you want to do that brings, but <laughs> however, i probably could look at that also as a trauma response. I'm getting attention. I'm getting validation. Right? right. And like, if it's hard and if you're leaning on other people's energy to make it happen or having other types of experiences occur where, you know, it's taking from others as well, then you're not in your alignment mm -hmm. because there's a limitation there. There's a lack of something. Right.
right? Now I've seen other people do like really great things to nurture their inner child. And like, I took an art class or I, I joined a dance class or, you know, like I, I remember doing this when I was a kid and I enjoyed doing that. That's fantastic. That is going to help heal you. That's going to help align you. Mm -hmm. But maybe you weren't in alignment to be like a dancer. Right. But you liked dancing. Mm -hmm. Right. And maybe you weren't aligned in an alignment to be a, an artist, but you liked drawing. You know, like you enjoyed mm -hmm. it because it was fun, right? That's great. Especially You're... if you have a rejection boom, you can't be an artist. <laughs> well, because then, I, then I, that people falls are going to be like, oh, that... well, it goes back to like people judging you and then you take that person. I think that no matter what, the rejection wound can lead in many facets, right. not just one aspect of that. It will lead in many, many ways. But the reality is alignment is something that's yours and no one can take that from you. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately we live in a world where there's a lot of competition there's a lot of like a limited mindset like the idea that i can't do this because i'm taking this from you or you're taking something from me is insane like no i have my own abundant line i have my own stream of consciousness i have my own experiences i have my own alignment why would i assume like limited mind thinking goes um there's the jealousy of like, oh, look what they're doing now. And it's like, okay, that's great. All the power to them. Let them do it. Mm -hmm. Right? That's not taking something from you. Right. Why would it take something? That, again, this limited mindset takes away the fact that you're not looking at what you're, what is in your alignment and what you're innately good at. Right. And it goes back to just looking for the outside to tell you that. Yeah, pretty much. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think makes, we'll, we'll end, makes more sense. I think yeah. We'll end there. I think we'll end there because I think like I'd like to do more conversations around the um, dimensional aspects of things so mm -hmm. people can understand the range of what I'm trying to communicate because uh, I don't want to lose anyone in context. But I definitely do think that there is um, a lot more to explore when we're talking about what is and isn't, and it is not black and white. Right. One takeaway from today, for sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome.